at this point, I'm going to move on to the last speaker, Sumed Sharma from the University of Alabama. The title of this talk is Retrofit of Existing Foundation to Convert Traditional RC Wall into Rocking Wall Using Ultra High Performance Concrete. The floor is yours, Sumed. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am Sumed Sarma from University of Alabama, and today I am presenting our work on retrofit of existing foundation to convert traditional reinforced concrete wall into rocking wall. Thanks to the earlier presenter, uh, you might have known more about UHPC. So this is a collaborative work between University of Alabama and University of Buffalo. Shriram Aledi and Pinar Okumus are the PIs involved in this project. <laughs> The primary motivation of our overall project is to provide a uh, suitable uh, retrofit solution for non-ductile RC buildings. These buildings are in thousands in numbers and are spread across uh, seismically active areas across the United States. They are prone to brittle failure and poses a significant seismic hazard for upcoming uh, seismic events. Many of these uh, non-ductile reinforced concrete buildings have uh, reinforced concrete shear walls as part of their lateral force racing systems. These walls themselves are subjected to possible failure because of improper uh, shear reinforcement and uh, confining details. One of the possible retrofit measures for these uh, shear walls are to convert them into rocking walls. First of all, a base cut can be uh, created at the wall foundation interface as shown in step one. This weakens the structures and, so, uh, and subsequently reduces the shear demand on the walls. Eventually, post tensioning can be added uh, to the walls to get back some of the lost strength and enable self-centering during any size, uh, during a sizing event. The major uh, topic that uh, is part of today's presentation is uh, related to anchorage of this post tensioning into uh, the foundation. So this is the anchorage scheme that we have investigated both experimentally and numerically as part of this project. So what we're aiming is, uh, is to uh, embed vertical dial bars into foundation, uh, into the existing foundation and uh, embed horizontal interface bar into existing normal concrete wall. Then additional tie bars can be added uh, to the setup to uh, properly distribute the anchorage force. These reinforcement bars and they are then embedded uh, in uh, USB-C uh, by pouring USB-C all around uh, the wall, the base of the wall. And subsequently, external post tensioning can be anchored into this USB-C block and the wall can be cut at a suitable height above the USB-C block to uh, get a complete rocking wall setup. So these are the primary uh, dimensions of uh, the test specimens we tested. So this is here to give you an idea of the scale of the test uh, we conducted. The foundation is three feet by four feet uh, and the height of the foundation was 16 inches. The wall was two feet wide and six is thin, six inch thick. The dimension of the USB-C block uh, port uh, was dictated by the development length of the dowel bars and the interface bars and their corresponding clear cover requirements. The overall space, specimen dimension come from uh, uh, one third scale of the real of the prototype walls to be tested as part of the overall project. The longitudinal bars in the wall consisted of number six uh, rebars and uh, number three ties were used at 19 center to center to tie these longitudinal bars. More importantly, this slide shows the uh, dowel bar and interface reinforcement details uh, used in the study. Four dial bars on each side of the walls were used, and depending on the test specimen, either number six or number seven dial bars were uh, used. And similarly, number three or number four interface bars were used, depending on the interface roughness provided uh, to the normal concrete wall. These interface roughness were, were provided all across, uh, all around the wall, and the height of the interface roughness was determined by the height of the USB C block around it. As you can see in this diagram, commercial form liners were used to uh, imprint roughness texture into the normal concrete wall so that we get uniform distribution of roughness textures around the wall. In total, we tested uh, four specimens. So two of the specimens had uh, either 0.2 inch deep 
uh, interface roughness texture or 0.08 inch smoother roughness texture. Either of the roughness texture was uh, coupled with either number seven dial bars or number six dial bars to get four specimens in total. Whenever we used a rougher interface, we used a smaller interface bar and subsequently for smoother test, uh, smoother interface roughness, we used a higher size bar at the interface. So this slide uh, shows the fabrication process for the test specimens. It is important to note that compared to uh, the real retrofit scheme, we embedded the uh, vertical rebars vertical dowels, or dowel bars, and the horizontal interface bars into the normal case, normal concrete case itself uh, before pouring of concrete to ease the construction process in lab. So after pouring of uh, normal concrete, we created a block out using styrofoam and PVC duct to enable post tensioning uh, anchors into the USB-C. So eventually USB-C was poured all around the base of the wall and the specimen was ready to be tested. So in case of the fourth, uh, the last specimen, we had issue while pouring uh, normal concrete. Uh, the normal concrete did not consolidate all the way to the base of the wall, and there was void um, at the base of the wall, right up to the uh, point where USB-C was supposed to be poured. So in case of this specimen, uh, the USB-C block will have some monolithic joint uh, across the wall unlike other three test specimens, which will affect uh, some of our experimental results as they come later. So this is the experimental setup we used to test the wall. Uh, first of all, the specimen was tied down using uh, post tensioning to the strong floor in the lab. A loading beam was put on top of two 400 kip uh, load, uh, loading jack and high strength bar was anchored at the top of the loading beam and into the USB-C block. Uh, to act as external post tensioning element. Eventually, these wooden paste posts, which are on both sides of the specimens, were removed, and the loading jack was used to apply vertical displacement to the loading beam, which eventually transferred uh, post uh, tensioning force through these high strength bars into the USB C block. A total of three load cycles from 0 to 110 kip was applied to all the test specimens. Different LEDs, uh, instrumentation, LVDTs, and strain gauges in dowel bars and, U and interface bars were used to monitor the uh, strain and displacement values uh, uh, related to the specimen. These two 400 kip load cells were used to record the loading data. So very minor cracking in USB-C region was observed during uh, testing. Uh, there was no damage observed in normal concrete uh, part of the specimen, whether it be in the wall or the foundation. So initially at around 60 kip, there was some minor cracking that propagated just above the anchor region. These uh, cracks became more prominent as uh, loading increased uh, close to 100 kips and new uh, cracks uh, uh, formed around the location of vertical dowel bars. So these are the only damage that were observed. And similarly, in another specimen, we had a similar trend where you could see progression of damage just above the anchorage region. So basically, uh, the uh, testing went relatively damage free. So now let's uh, now in the next few slides, we'll be talking about the displacement of the USB-C block. So in X direction and in out, out of plane direction, the displacement uh, recorded uh, was uh, negligible, so it won't be discussed. So we'll be only discussing about the displacement observed in the vertical direction, that is the Y axis. So NDI LEDs were placed as seen in this figure at several locations, and they are capable of recording deformation in all three different axes. The displacement observed in Y axis was uh, interpolated to uh, create displacement profile at peak load of first load cycle, as seen here. So if you look at for all the displacement, there is slight variation in, uh, in displacement across the USB-C block. But if you look at the difference between the maximum and the minimum displacement observed in each of these individual uh, displacement profile, it's, it's uh, pretty small. So we can assume that the 
uh, USB-C blocked was uh, ex experienced deformation in y-axis in a relatively uniform manner. So when you go from specimen uh, one to specimen two, the difference is uh, a smoother interface roughness. So we expect displacement to be increased and that is what we observe from our experimental finding. And similarly, when we uh, decrease uh, the size of the dial bar from number seven to number six, the displacement is supposed to increase and that is what you observe as well. But in case of specimen four, as we talked before, uh, there was an anomaly during uh, pouring of normal concrete due to which there was monolithic connection between USB-C block on either side of the wall, which uh, that's why we cannot compare this result with the other three specimens while talking about displacement. So now uh, we'll uh, spend a few slides talking about the behavior of reinforcements uh, involved in the test specimen. First of all, talking about the dial bars, as we saw in the previous slide, uh, there was uniform, uh, more or less uniform uh, displacement of the USB-C block in the vertical direction. This can be uh, verified through the strains in the dial bars as well. If you look at the purple bar, this is close to uh, the loading point where the green bar uh, is located further away uh, at the edge of the USB-C block. All of these strains are measured at wall USB-C block interface. So as, as the loading was applied, uh, the strains in these bars uh, develop more or less uh, uh, to the same point. Uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, some of the strain gauges in two of these specimens. But uh, looking at the results from specimen one and specimen two, what you can observe is uh, the dial bars engage consistently throughout the specimen. And as, expect and as expected, when we uh, lower the size uh, of the dial bars from number seven to number six, the strain in the bars increase to match up to uh, the loading demand. So however, uh, the case in wall bars were different. The red ones are the bars, which are located close to the loading point, but the blue ones Blue bars are the ones that are located at the edge of the wall uh, panel. So uh, what you can see is uh, these red ones experience higher strain compared to the blue ones. So this is possibly because uh, even though the USB-C block uh, moved uniformly, the interface here transfer was moreover localized at the central region of the uh, wall rather than the edge of the wall because of which the ball reinforcement which are at the center of the wall experience higher strain and they contributed more to resisting the external post sensing load compared to the ones at the edge. So this finding can be further uh, justified uh, through uh, the strain development in the interface bars. As you can see, so this, uh, this, this bar is uh, located right above the anchorage zone and these are experiencing higher strain in all the specimen compared to bars that are further away uh, from the loading point of the specimen. So this suggests that uh, the interface here transfer that is happening between the USB-C block and the wall is primarily concentrated near the anchorage zone. So uh, this is the reason why the wall reinforcement that are uh, closer to the center of the wall are engaged more compared to the wall reinforcements that are away from the center. So as noted previously, we provided some anchorage, uh, some tie uh, bars to uh, evenly distribute the anchorage forces coming out from the anchorage zone to the entire USB-C block. So these, uh, uh, the red ones are again, one that are on outside of the USB-C block and the blue one is uh, the strain values from tie bars that are, uh, that are located close to the uh, wall. and. And comparing the results, the red ones that are further away from the wall got engaged more. This is because we the the loading was slightly uh, outside, uh, uh, slightly more on the outside face of the USB-C block. They were not symmetric, so that we left some part of the USB-C stuck to the wall um, to get uh, a better behavior. So this is why the red ones are uh, engaging more. So the results show that uh, it is it is better to provide tie bars, which will uh, eventually spread uh, the anchorage force uniformly into the USB-C block. So uh, these are uh, so uh, the next few slides will be uh, talking about uh, some of the pre-test uh, FM modeling that we did before testing. So these are still under progress. So we model normal concrete foundation, UHC block and normal concrete wall using nonlinear uh, concrete properties. 
the USB-C normal concrete interface uh, between uh, USB-C and uh, wall foundation and USB-C and wall uh, block was more using gap elements. So in terms of qualitative results, uh, the cracking in the USB-C uh, was uh, observed in FEM model as well. It was, low, it was primarily concentrated above the anchorage region, while uh, there were no cracking uh, observed uh, near to the location. The FEM model was not uh, able to capture it. So similarly, in terms of displacement, uh, uh, the FM model, uh, um, as expected, shows more idle response, where the displacement is more concentrated at the anchor region, and they subsequently die out as we go to the left and right of the uh, uh, loading loading region. So similarly, some of the strain values uh, for the first specimen are plotted here. Uh, the experimental, uh, uh, as explained earlier, the the wall reinforcement experience lower strain, which is captured by the uh, FM model as well. While the wall uh, reinforcement at the center experience higher strain, the wall uh, uh, reinforcement at the A's experience lower strain, which is captured by the FM model. And similarly, the dowel bars, uh, but in case of dowel bars, the FM model was unable to capture uh, the uniform distribution of strain, uh, which was observed in the experiment in case of dowel bars. Uh, in case of FM model, the dial bars are located close to the anchor region. They experience high strain uh, compared to that uh, located at the edge ones. So this is still under progress, and we'll calibrate uh, the numerical model based on our experimental findings. So in conclusion, uh, what we can observe is USB-C can be used uh, to create relatively damage-free anchor solution to external post tensioning. Also, because USB-C requires lower development length and clear cover for bars. Uh, the anchorage process can be less intrusive. And if proper interface reinforcement is provided uh, uh, between USB-C and normal uh, concrete, then the wall, uh, then the existing wall reinforcement inside normal concrete walls can be counted upon to resist part of the post tensing load. And in the future, we'll update the numerical model to better capture the experimental results. Thank you, and I'm ready for any questions you have. Thank you, uh, Sumit, for the interesting talk.